Welcome to another Blocks Builder video. Um, and this video is in response to a question from YouTuber Tago, hopefully I pronounced your username correctly, who asked the question about how do we add a delay to the hover in Blocks. Now, the class manager doesn't support um, every CSS um, style that's available. Um, so in this case, we're actually going to add some CSS to the page header to have the result that we're after. If we have a quick preview of this sample website, and we come down and we look at the button element, we find that you know the transition from, from its normal state to its hover state is instantaneous or near instantaneous when we put the cursor on it. And the same down here for our linked element. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply some styling to our A tags so that we can have a bit more of a fancy effect here, make it feel more interactive and not so jarring. So back to our canvas. If you want these effects to apply against all your pages over your whole project, remember just use your project header. In this case, we're using our page header. So I'm just gonna open up my page settings and my page header. Oh my. Now, I've written in here some different styles that we're going to look through. So up in here between my style tags, opening and closing style tags, I'm going to add um, my A tag and then our curly brackets. Now transition, the transition style has several different sort of properties. We can have transition property, transition duration, transition timing function, transition delay. The transition property one uh, allows you to specify uh, the property that you want um, to be affected by the transition effect. Uh, in this case here on this line, we just, we're just we telling it just to affect the width. We can set height. We can also set all to affect all style properties. The transition duration is basically the length of time that the transition is going to progress over. In this example here, it's over one second. Transition timing function um, is kind of setting the effect that you get. So in this case, we could put something like linear, which means that the timing of the transition is constant from start to end. Uh, we can do something like ease in, which uh, is slow to start with and speeds up. We've got ease out, which as the transition happens, it slows down when it comes to the end. And uh, we also have ease in, ease out, uh, which is slower, speeds up, and slows down again. In my case here, I'm just going to use the ease one. So I'll uh, comment these out again, because what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, what is known as shorthand. So instead of writing each one of these out like this, so it's full name, we can do a shorthand called transition. Uh, make sure I think I spelled this wrong, transition. And we don't actually have to write out each one. We can put it all in one line. So I'm going to do all uh, style properties. The next thing I want to do is apply my duration. In this case, I'm going to do one second. Um, my timing function, I'm just going to set that to ease, and I'm not going to do a delay here, so I'm just going to end that there. So this is called shorthand. That's much easier than writing out all of this. So if we go and preview this, and we come down to our link, and hover over our link, we'll find that over one second, it transitions from its normal state to its hover state. But if we come up to our button element, we'll find that that's not been affected at all. Now that's really interesting because our button element is an A tag. If we come in and inspect this element by right clicking, we can see here our button is an A tag, but Bootstrap adds this class called BTN. BTN. And this BTN class, if we look on the right hand side here, actually has a transition applied to it for 0.15 of a second. And now that is overriding the transition we just added to our A tag. 
So what we need to do is we need to add some more CSS to our page header here. And we're going to call that .btn. And I can actually just copy everything we put for our A tag here. And when we preview our page, we'll now get a one second transition on our button. Say for example, we want a delay, which is one of our other attributes that we can use on this um, style, our transition delay. What we can do on our shorthand is at the end here, say uh, on our button, we wanted to add a delay of three seconds before the transition started. Preview that. One, two, three. Now we have our transition. The only problem with setting it like that is when we remove our cursor, we're gonna have a three second delay before it reverts back to its normal state. The way we can fix that is by adding some CSS for our hover state. So we can quickly copy our button class here and on our duplicate one, we're gonna add the hover pseudo element there. We're gonna keep our delay at three seconds, but on our button class, we're gonna add a zero second delay. Preview this. We'll get our three second delay before the transition happens. And when we move our cursor, it'll instantly change. How awesome is that? So you can play around with the timing to get the effect that you want to match your design. Um, just as a, a, an added bonus here, and I want to do a video that's more in depth on transition and transformation, which is another style we can use. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a quick example of how transition and transform can work really well together. So what we're going to do is as we hover over this carousel, we're going to have our images enlarge or create like a zoom effect. And it's really easy for us to do. So with our carousel selected and on the left hand panel, we're going to open and expand down until we can see our carousel items. And now each one of these contains our carousel slide. So we're going to expand that and select our image. And I'm going to add a new class to it called Zoom. You can call it whatever you like. If we go back to our page header, we're going to add this class called Zoom. And in this Zoom, I'm going to have uh, a style called Transform. And because we're zooming in, um, our image, well, I'm going to use the scale property. Scale. And we want it to default to a one to one ratio. On hover, we're going to want that to increase. So I'm going to duplicate my zoom class and add my hover pseudo element. And we're going to change the scale to 1.1. Doesn't sound like a lot. But that is a lot of movement on an image, as you'll see. If we come back and preview this, as I now hover over that image, we'll see it jump to that 1.1 scaling. But it's not very nice to have that jumping effect, is it? So this is where transitions are really helpful. And what I'm going to do under our Zoom class is I'm now going to add a transition. I'm going to select all one second I'm going to have that ease in and out and I'm not going to have a delay on that and that's all I should need to apply we have a look how awesome is that so that's how easy it is to add transitions and transformation to elements in our blocks project um, I'll do a much more in-depth video at some other stage um, on on transformations and transitions. Okay, take care.